Hello folks. I'm out in the garage and I've made up a couple of short adapters with separate conductors so that I can test the actual current draw of various welders with an ammeter. Occasionally I see questions where people are wondering what size breaker they need to run a particular welder or they're just wondering you know how high they can run their welder without tripping a breaker. So that's why I made up these adapters so that I can test welders going forward any welder that I review or test I'll be checking the actual amount of current draw from the receptacle. And in this video, I'll test a couple as well on 120 volts, just so that we have some real numbers to look at and talk about. So let's test a couple of welders and then I'll come back and talk about the numbers and talk a little bit about how breakers work so you can kind of get an idea for what's going on. For now, let's start by testing the Chicago Electric 125 amp flux core welder. This is the same as the uh, 90 amp flux core welder from Harbor Freight. I've never had a trip a breaker, but it will be interesting to see just how much current this welder does draw from the wall when it's maxed out and you know how close it is to tripping a breaker. So let's find out. Next, I'm going to test the Everlast PowerArc 160i STH on 120 volts. Now, this welder only puts out 90 amps on 120 volts, so let's see how much it's drawing from a 120 volt circuit when maxed out. All right, that might have been surprising to some people to see that both of those welders were actually drawing over 30 amps from a 20 amp circuit when they were running maxed out. So why didn't they trip a 20 amp breaker if they're drawing over 30 amps? One of them actually bumped up to as high as 40 amps temporarily. Well, it all comes down to how the breakers work. Breakers typically have two different types of trip systems. They will have a thermal trip system and they will have a magnetic trip system. The thermal trip system is designed such that it will begin heating up anytime the draw through that breaker is higher than the breaker rating. So for instance, a 20 amp breaker, if any more than 20 amps are going through that breaker, that element will begin to heat up. And I say element, but it's actually just a little metallic spring. And what happens is if that little metallic piece gets hot enough, it will actually bend far enough that it will trip the breaker. So, the thermal trip system is not an instant trip system because it's going to take some time for that little piece to heat up. The more current is being drawn through the breaker, the faster that element will heat up and the faster the breaker will trip. So if the breaker is only slightly overloaded, you may be able to run it for quite a long time before it actually trips. Whereas if it is just grossly overloaded, it'll heat up much faster and it'll trip much faster. The magnetic trip system is essentially an instant trip system. The way that works is there's essentially a small electromagnet inside the breaker. The more current is flowing through that electromagnet, the higher the magnetic force is, and if it gets high enough, it will trip the breaker. However, that magnetic trip point is typically quite a bit higher than the rated trip point of the breaker. So if a breaker is rated at 20 amps, the instant magnetic trip point is much, much higher than that. And the reason for that is to handle short overloads, such as a motor starting or something like that. So if you go to start a saw or, uh, you know, basically anything with a motor where you have that kind of instant surge draw that immediately drops again, you don't want that tripping a breaker every time because that's going to be a nuisance. So that instant trip setting is set quite a bit higher than the breaker's nameplate rating. So for instance, for a 20 amp breaker, the instant trip point Maybe quite a bit higher than that. I don't know what it is exactly unless I look at the specs, but it could be as high as 50 or 60 amps or, or maybe even more. It just depends on, you know, the actual exact rating of that breaker. Really, that magnetic trip system is just designed for short circuits. So a short circuit is going to draw an extreme amount of amps right away, and that magnetic trip system is just designed to trip that breaker instantly if there's any kind of a short circuit. The magnetic trip system is designed to have a little bit of a delay built in so that it can handle temporary overloads such as motor starting or even just in the case of like something like a, a welder where 
the loads aren't continuous. There's a duty cycle. It's going on and off. You're, you're not welding, you know, continuous. So there's that little bit of a buffer built in. So the delay from that thermal system is why a welder like this that draws, uh, you know, 35 to 40 amps when it's maxed out from a 120 volt circuit won't immediately trip a 20 amp breaker. It would eventually trip that 20 amp breaker if I welded long enough, but as soon as that current stops flowing through the breaker, so for instance, as soon as you pause your welding for a moment, that little element in that breaker is going to start cooling down. And so, you know, it gives you a little bit more time again once you start welding again. So every time the current stops flowing, the thermal element starts to cool back down and, you know, you get a little bit further from tripping it again. So for something like a 15 amp breaker, it may be more likely that a welder will trip it immediately because not only is the thermal trip point lower, but that instantaneous trip point is also going to be lower. So you may be a little bit more likely to be bumping up against that, that instantaneous trip point. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of understanding of how breakers work and how a welder like this that's drawing, you know, nearly twice what a breaker is rated for doesn't immediately trip the breaker. If I welded long enough, it definitely would. But with short welds, as you've seen, you can definitely get away with it. So going forward, now that I have these adapters, any welder that I make a video on, I will be checking their current draw. So that's it for today. If there's any other welders or any other specific scenarios under which you'd like me to test the current draw, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.